Good afternoon, everybody. Frankie Day here for Frankie Day Models. Okay, fellas, today is the topic of today's video. is going to be a group build. I'm going to get started right here. Uh, it's called the Australian Support Group Build. It's for all the for the support for all the people out there who's lost their homes and the poor koala bears lost their homes and the kangaroos and all the animals that have lost their homes, which are burnt out of the burnt down to the ground. And uh, so. I could at least do a, an act of kindness by just creating a, a group build just for support, you know, of, of letting everybody know that we're thanking other people in Australia. Give them some kind of moral support somehow. And uh, I've already gave them some, a little bit of money, what I had, that I could help out so, that, so make sure that the poor animals get fed. It's the best I can do, it's the best what we all can do. We need to chip in a little bit. And help out the good cause. Like I say, these poor things are burnt out of their homes, they got nowhere to go. Same thing with people. So we can't exclude the human element to it either. But it goes good. It's all it's all good guys. It's all good. It goes for the good and the good Lord will prevail, take care of the rest. Okay. My build entry is uh, a little different for me in a way. In a lot of ways, it's not because it's been on it. There's a lot of these things on the internet. There's a lot of them. I, I was kind of digging around a little bit out there, rooting around out there in my stash pile, and I came across this kit right here. I want to this be my one of my entries here. I'm going to do for the uh, support group. I'm going to do at least two of them. This airplane here is no stranger to all of us modelers. This model can be this model here can be built either by the novice. The professional, the intermediate builder, anybody that can that knows how to build a model, this kit's for you. I haven't had one of these in many, many, many years. I have one in my stash, in my tucked away in my box down below in the bosun locker. I don't know what box is out. I got lots and lots of boxes, hundreds of them in there, and uh, some of them are marked and some of them aren't. And uh, I have the original 1958 Fokker DR1 that came in a different uh, boxing than the regular Ravel Germany. It was the original Ravel kit. And uh, and I built, that was Eddie Rickenbacker's, uh, no, no, that was a uh, Ben Victofton's uh, machine, is this one right here. And uh, I looked at the kit a while ago, just like the one I built many years ago. So that kit is more or less, uh, I did. On that kit right there, I more or less, uh, it was all red, I can remember. It was a Fokker Red. As a matter of fact, I air glossed, uh, Fokker Red air gloss dope on it. I remember that. I, I took down the air gloss dope and I thinned it down with a lacquer thinner. And uh, to its butt, as thin, thin as, uh, as, as metalizer paint. And it was air brushing on there. Came out pretty good. And uh, so this one here is going to be a fast build. It don't take much to build this bad boy. Priming, pre shading, and add the color, the decals, and that's it. I'm going to do the um, the floorboard in this thing, is I'm going to do it in oils. And uh, so I got a bunch of oils that I've got, and I'll, I'll show it to you after we uh, review the kit here. Okay, this is the box that it comes into. Uh, there's a price tag uh, on there that Russ had it marked down from uh, 2090. $20 to 95 cents down to 17.89. I remember you let me have this for ten dollars So that's pretty good deal. I made that like a champ in that one We'll back out a little bit. We'll start out with the end view with the kit and uh, We'll get along with the uh, construction of it Everything. Okay, firstly uh, You've got your typical Ravella Germany instructions They're quite different than the original Ravella ones that I've had we can get a little closer, guys. We'll try to keep all the stuff as close as we can so I can. This is hard to judge distance on this monitor right here, I think. As long as it fits inside that frame right there, I imagine you can see it quite well. Okay, of course, this is the elementary, Watson. Elementary. Nothing but icon, the call outs, how the. Also, you got your color call outs here. Probably all the Bell Germany colors. And, uh, page one right here 
has the construction of the uh, the three figures. I remember they gave you some figures too. Same thing came with my uh, sock with camel. I did a bid, I did a, a build on that, a build report on that one. And it's in one of my videos back there. You want to take a look at that, fellas? Those that you haven't seen that were building the camel. Uh, they all come with figures like this. These are this is a scale of 120, 128. It's pretty good size. It's a lot more bigger than 132nd scale. And uh, they got call outs for the pilots right here. And here's your engine they give you right here. It comes in uh, about three pieces. That's all there is to it, fellas. Three pieces. And that's assembly right there. And these are the call outs, how to paint and everything. Some guys go ahead and paint them silver, paint them black, all black first, and go back over with silver. Or you add washes to it, wherever you want to do to detail this engine. It's a very nice engine. And over here is exploded views of the construction of the fuselage right here. Make sure when you construct this kit, you got rigging line you put to put this thing. It usually comes as a, a, a next step. I think on step eight, step step uh, step eight or step nine is when they start coming in with the rigging. So look out for your rigging. This all there is to your uh, to your pilot compartment. You got your wicker seat, you got the wicker seat frame, you got the floorboard, and your rudder pedals, and you got some string. You got line on here. There's string right here that passes through under the floorboard here through the floor pedals and it goes aft which controls your your rudder so be sure to add that string there now this kit here I remember by building the other one it, it shows you where the strings at but there's string right there that you gotta tie you gotta make sure that's that all that string is tied on your pedal and it passes right through your worker seat frame all of you have to hooks up to your control horn to your rudder. Step seven is your assembly of your wings. Not much shaking there. You got three wings. They come in halves. And uh, there's an option right here. I imagine you can cut the uh, the ailerons and position them the way you want. And number eight, there's not much to this part. There's not much to this plane, fellas. Not much to it. And I figure it's about a three or four day project. Uh, step eight right here. The assembly of the top wings, the guns. And uh, they gave you an option on the uh, uh, the cabin struts can either be red or they could be natural wood. Right here, step nine, right here. This is where the rigging begins, right here. This is on your firewall of your engine. This goes up to your cabin struts. And you see right next to it, that's assembly to it. So when you rig it up there, make sure you got one line going here and one line going there. And these down here go to your bug to your undercarriage. Right here, fellas. Is your complete of your assembly right here? All your previously rigged lines. As a matter of fact, they give you uh, rigging on, on this kit. Typical Revell Germany rigging. It comes in. The, you'll see it as we, as we go into the inbox with you. And right here, you got your cordage that goes to the upper planning of your of your uh, your, your, your landing gear wing, and that goes up in the here. They, they actually, they, they come out of your firewall, your previously rig, and they hook up down to the bottom of your, uh, so be sure you hook up your undercarriage legs up to your top of your, your undercarriage plane, and uh, tie them off right there, secure them well there. And here's your forward, like I say, you got rigged cabin stats going there. You already got holes already made for you already, so you can't go wrong. And you get your decals here for this kit. Right here, the only thing to do is give you an option of the paint schedules at Manfred and Vic Bertoft. And they got just 11 August 1917. His paint schedule list is like two types of olive drabs. It's more like a pre-shading kind of a color scheme on here. 
you got the light olive with, with dark olive over it. And the top wings are, are green, I believe. Then by 1918, before he got shot down in April, this is his machine right here. All red, all crimson red. <coughs> so that's that. That completes the the walk-in of the instructions, and we'll set that over here. This right here, you guys can discard this. This is for people who like to read. And it's good reading in here, especially you got children. They got to understand the rules, regulations of handling paints and glues and everything else and such. So you got a you got young ones around there, waltz them to this. Russ, pitch it. Light a candle with it, do what you got to do. But for little ones, you get in the models, always teach them how to read these things. It's uh it gives them a good understanding of what they're dealing with. Okay, here's the decals here. Decals look pretty good to me. I don't know what kind of decals. It's regular standard Revell decals. The shrink cartograph. And they give you different options of the, of the uh, iron crosses on the wings. Got here, that's probably for 1917 right there. 1918 is uh well, here's one I'll be using. I'll be using the red machine. The other ones, you can, you got lines right here where you can discard them and cut them off. Put that in your decal box. You might you get another general wall on a plane you want to build. And this scale, you can use those. So, they always come in handy with something, fellas. <coughs> Decals ain't too bad. This is a new kit. They don't seem like they're damaged at all. I think I bought this kit about a year ago. Okay, this is the fun part, fellas. We got the decals out of the way, so you know what you expect with decals on this kit. I like this big bag they give you. They give you a big colossal bag full of parts. So be very careful when you take it out. Make sure you lose no parts. And put the parts back in that bag when I get done. The starters start out with a fuselage. This thing is molded in a very, very bright red plastic. And it has a stamp in there. Ravel, Venice, California, 1957. I'd be goddamn. I built mine in 1958. This thing's been around the horn then some a lot of times, fellas. And actually this kit is still as good a shape as they it was uh, produced. This was actually known as a connoisseur's kit in 1957 and 58. A lot of guys around my age at the time bought these, and a lot of kids like me bought something else. We never bought these things that much. We're more or less interested in other things besides uh, these. And these mostly adults bought these, and these are I think back then they're three dollars they cost back then. That was a lot of money back in 1957. A lot of money, and uh, it's very detailed as a real machine. You can see little blemishes there with our La Jiraz right across to here. That's nice. Here's your upper undercarriage, upper plane for your undercarriage right here. Here's one of the ground crew. They got a little bit of flash on here, but that stuff comes off very easy. And this kit's not very much flash. As old as this thing is, and millions and millions of these things produced it. <coughs> Excuse me, fellas. The molds are still remarkably in excellent condition. There's more. We got two more figures here. I want to send these off to Freddie. I want to have Freddie paint these for me. A lot of detail in there with washes. I'll tell you, you, you can have some fun doing that. Here's a thread to give you. Same stuff to get our kit ship kits. They give you this little 
this little locking a full of thread. You should be sure to use beeswax on this. It seems like it's pretty good. It's more like it's polyester, more than anything. <coughs> so I'll put some beeswax on it. Take a cake of beeswax. I think I got some here somewhere. Oh, I could have swore I had some here. Well, oh, here it is. I knew I had some. Take a cake of be beeswax like this and go like this. Let free. Let free. Okay. This spree right here contains the engine. Wicker seats, cable struts, wing skids, the bottom plane of the undercarriage, firewall, cowling. This screw contains the mains of the engine. This screw here contains the tail feathers, the, the stabilizer, and these are the base plates with, with uh, recessed foot marks for the, where you can glue your fingers to. <coughs> Here's your guns, it's pretty neat. I'm going to drill those out right there. I got a small pen vise, I'm going to drill them out. Give a little extra realism. The floorboard sure can use some help, I'll tell you that. So you can treat that, make sure you put that wood in there, fellas. By using the oils, you can work in your wood grain on there. Here's your cave struts. Propeller. These rudder pedals. Your yoke. And you have hand grips right here that fit on there. You got the control horns right there for your elevators. And the ailerons and rudder. Lastly, is the three wings. Here's your frame for your wicker seat frame right here. And you got your bottom wing. Here's your top wing. Top of your top wing. Just like so. Very nice texture there, guys. This thing gets some washes. Little pastels on there. Make it scream alive. Lastly, the is going to be the uh, the top of the bottom, the third, second wing. And this is the bottom wing right here. The middle, the mid wing. Here's the bottom wing. Again, with the Vail Stamp logo on here, 1957. With Vail Incorporated, Venice, California. Boy, when I was out in California, Venice is only about 40 miles away from my house at the time. We used to go down there and get kits all the time. I'll tell you something about, about Venice, California. Back in the nifty 1950s, the late 1950s, when they were going strong out there, there was a place called Scratch and Dent. They made models like this. And they came out screwed up, they threw away. Guys like me went in a trash can and got them out and built them. So those kind of free models for us. But that's it, guys. That completes the uh, inbox review of this thing. And uh, I'm going to get started this night, and uh, later on I'm going to start doing the olive drab on the on the Memphis Bell and get that out of the way. And that should do it. And uh, this is a fun old kit. I'm surprised these things, the, the, the flash on these things are just uh, very minimal. But I think it's been reduced for 60 something years. It's amazing. Well, simply amazing. An overall overview, guys, it's a good kit. It's an excellent kit. But like I said a while ago, back in those days, you get guys old fuds like me, you know. They, uh, they bought these things because a lot of guys. At my age at that time, but probably World War One fire pilots at one time. I fought in World War One and probably uh, 
bought these for collector pieces, I could see 